Hey guys, I'm Ethan, your New York-based organization development coach. I work with organizations to unleash their people's untapped potential, and I often work with them to transform their culture. Want to spend today talking about an organization that reached, I think, the Xenix or height of its kind of market penetration back during COVID, and that's a company called Zoom Video Communication. So I, like many other people, have in the past and continue to use Zoom for a lot of my video conferencing, as well as the recordings on my podcast. It's easy to use, it's easy to begin, and the basic service is free. So it's all, it was up until recently, all upside, until a little situation arose and it really made me rethink and consider the actual culture of Zoom. And so that's what today's video is on, where I do a little bit of a dive into the culture at Zoom video communication. So a few weeks ago, at the recommendation of my partner who oversees all my video production work, he suggested that I attempt to upgrade the video setting, um, the high definition setting on my video for my podcast. So I did, and almost immediately lost the ability to see my video on my side, as well as go into recording mode or facilitate, utilize the breakout group function. So I reached out to Google's customer care because that's what you do when you're struggling to utilize the platform of a service provider, right? It's pretty basic. It's pretty straightforward. So I want to share with you some of the experience that I had because I think that it's instructive for other people. So I, after initially having all these issues, I attempted to reach out to Zoom and have them resolve my issue. So I sent them an email. You can kind of see it on your screen. And I said, this is their response. I said, after attempting to change the settings on my video, on my Zoom account, I'm not able to access some of the baseline feature functionality. And that precipitated literally two weeks of constant back and forth after I opened a job ticket, which in and of itself is difficult. So I think this is reflective, the way that I was treated of the way most tech firms, the way most startups handle their client engagement. And it sucks. It's awful. And somebody somewhere needs to think rather than outsourcing all of your client support to some, so to some other low labor market, rather than automating the bejesus out of the client experience, rethinking the humanization of the engagement of your clients. So they ultimately sent me back a reply and they always start off in all their replies. I fully understand. We totally get the issue that you're having. And then they explain why they can't help you. And then they suggest that you go about resolving it yourself. That is their go-to dance card. That's the way that they handle client inquiries. And so that's what I've been dealing with with Zoom for a period of time. And ultimately, finally, I have no idea. The situation resolved. I can now utilize again all the baseline service feature functionality. The video quality, as you can see, is not significantly enhanced. Yes, I'm going to be considering other platforms that I'm aware of exist for mostly my podcast, Chasing the Dream, but it really just, the whole experience frustrated me. And so I wanted to share with you that this is pretty much the approach that tech firms take. So having said that, I started to think about what does that mean in terms of organizations? And so I did a little bit of digging on Zoom because this obviously is something that it's in my wheelhouse. I focus on organizations who are building world-class cultures are struggling. And going back to last August, so I wanna show you the source and all of the sources I reference are always down below. And I go to Times of India because they have a large contingent of dedicated full-time support staff for Zoom video communications in India. And check this out. I wanna read a little something. According to a report by Business Insider, Zoom CEO, Eric Wan, told employees in an all-hands meeting that the biggest problem the company is facing is culture. Okay, there's an acknowledgement right out of the gate that the CEO is putting his finger on the pulse that culture is mission critical. 
And then he says, and then he says, just to quote him, the number one problem we are facing is company culture. He told employees per the report. He said that the company cares about all of its employees. But at the same time, we build trust from our employees who care about business as well. Whoa. So what he's saying is we care about you if you care about our company. Well, what is he talking about? And here's the kicker. Here's where it really kind of comes out. An early report by Business Insider revealed that the company had asked their employees who live within 50 miles of a Zoom office location to report at least twice a week. Sounds fair, except for one fundamental issue. Well, there's one flaw to this logic. And I've dealt with this with my consulting practice. I've advised and counseled hundreds of organizations how to deal with employees working post-COVID in some kind of mutually beneficial capacity. Rather than telling employees, you're going to do this, make an understanding based on the employee's role, the department, you know, the priority of their being in office, and let them decide for themselves. That's not what's going on here. So those who want to leave can do so. Check this out. Juan, CEO of Zoom Video Communications, also said that employees who want to leave the company because of the new changes are welcome to do so. For any Zoomies who feel like this is not a company that I want to work for, absolutely. Okay, he said. We wish you all the best. Again, we want to make sure we support each other and focus on the company. In other words, don't let the door hit you in the butt on the way out. So rather than attempting to meet employees where they are, in, instead of attempting to solve your people's wants, needs, desires, because you realize they're your only competitive advantage, you say, here's the deal. This is how you're going to do it. If you don't like it, tough noogies, see ya. And for anybody who's watched any of my freaking videos over the last few years, there are hundreds of them on my YouTube channel. You know how much this literally gets under my skin in terms of a myopic, short-sighted, destructive, toxic way of thinking about the inherent relationship with your employees. So again, a lot of times you can see, you can learn a lot about an organization in terms of how it treats one group of stakeholders individuals who interact with the organization based on how it treats others. And most of the times in my consulting practice, I'll tell an organization who's struggling with culture, how do you treat your employees? How do you treat your clients? That's it. That's it. And if you really need to prioritize, focus on your people first. So when I was first having issues with Zoom, they don't allow you to call. And this is not this is not unique to them. It's pretty much the go-to standard move of all tech organizations who have customer care. They make you have to go through this myriad of non-humanistic, pure technology automated solutions. So Zoom directs you to their website. You can't call. Them. You cannot call them. And I had this, if you saw my video on when all of a sudden I lost access to my LinkedIn account, went through the same thing with those people. So you go to the Zoom contact us support website page and you've got to literally dig. You've got to dig. They make it incumbent on you, the customer. They make the client figure out how to solve their issues with their platform. And if you go all the way to the bottom, and by the way, when I first indicated to Zoom I was having issues, tech, technical issues, their response was, remove it. You have an outdated version. Upload the latest version. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. I did it all, and I was still having problems. So this is kind of the next step in that painful process. So you go all the way to their website. You go to their customer care. You dig through yourself where the support's going to come from, and you ultimately open a job ticket, which I did, and that started a several-week process. Okay. As I said, when you're thinking about an organization, maybe your own, in terms of culture, you start from the perspective of how do we treat our employees? How do we treat our clients? Start there, in that order. Start with your employees first. So this has been my experience, and it led me to think, well, what are employees saying about the culture there? 
let's let's take a moment to think about that. So, okay. As you all know, I go to a number of different websites where I look at employee reviews because even though they're biased, employee website, employee review websites are biased towards two groups of people. People who either do or used to work there, who either love their experience or had a really, really bad tenure. The people who are ambivalent don't invest the time and effort to go online and submit a review, but it's what we have to work with. So I go to a different, I, I'm trying a few different websites in addition to the standard ones to get a broader view of employee feedback about their experiences. So I go to Trustpilot, okay? 931 reviews on a scale of one to five. One is low, five is high. What's the average? 1.5, out of five. And, you know, you talk a lot about, you, you read about customer, there are some customer reviews that are kind of, kind of smudged in here, but there's a lot of other employee reviews and you go and you just spot check them and you can go through as I did. Um, they're not categorized easily, but that's the aggregate employee review ranking. And it's telling, it is telling. And why is this important for Zoom? from a strategic business imperative, because Zoom has made a strategic bet to shift their suite of service. And if you've experienced this, you kind of, you're in this process right now. They're going from a height of COVID video conference solution to a post COVID, a, a broader set of offerings that are umbrella categorized under workforce solutions. So they're making a strategic imperative to expand their suite of service. So these issues they're having between their employees and their clients, it's not going to be resolved by that shift in focus, strategic focus. It's going to be further magnified, further magnified, because they're going into a realm that they don't have that same amount of historical expertise in. Okay. So, hey, Ethan, maybe it's biased that you're going to trust Pilot, go to some others. So I go to Glassdoor, and lo and behold, there are fewer reviews, 75, but it, again, it's a baseline. And the average score is on a scale of one to five, it's a 3.8, which is pretty darn good for tech firms. And you, you go in and you look at their information. I look at ratings by demographic, and I always find that that's interesting. And then I look at by category. And this is what you do. This is what you do for a number of things. This is what you do if you're considering going to work for an organization. This is the kind of stuff that you gather if you're thinking to hire an organization as a service provider. And this is the kind of due diligence you really want to dive into. You want to look at the organization's culture before you get into bed with them. So that's that. And I want to dive a little bit deeper into some of these other issues. So we've, we, we've talked about the experience. And I mentioned the fact that Zoom is going into a new, they're, they're transitioning strategically to a new suite of service. They're expanding their offerings because you think about market share and you think about growth, <laughs> excuse me, and organizations that reached their height during COVID, well, we're well past that now. And so organizations like Zoom and like Peloton, which I've also done a video about, they're struggling to figure out the relationship they have with employees, the, the hybrid kind of work schedule, the way that they communicate is fundamentally different, both with clients and with employees. So that's my observation about Zoom. I hope you found this useful. Please, if you like the video, be sure to subscribe, share it with somebody else, and always come back to Chasing the Dream, this YouTube channel. I'm always adding new videos that shine a light on organizations that are doing both great work in culture building and are still challenged. So thanks a lot and have a great day.